Let's look at example 9.7 out of the Yates, Moore, and Starnes book. This is example 9.7 from the Yates, Moore, and Starnes book on page 507. A polling organization is going to ask a simple random sample of 1,500 first-year college students, N is 1,500, whether or not they applied to any other schools for admission besides the one they're attending. Suppose, in fact, the true proportion of students who applied to some other college is 35%. Of course, in real life, we may not know that, but hang with me for a little bit. What's the probability that the P hat I get, so that my P hat that I obtain when I ask these 1,500 college students is within two percentage points of the, third, of the true answer, the 35%. So in other words, what's the probability I get a P hat between 33 and 37 percent? That's the question. First, let's check the rules of thumb. As long as I've taken a simple random sample, then I know that the mean of all of my P hats is going to be the same as P, which is going to be 35 percent. Furthermore, According to rule of thumb one, I can, I can use the standard deviation rule as long as the population is at least 10 times bigger than the sample. I know there are more than 10 times 1,500 first-year college students. Therefore, I can use the rule that the standard deviation of p hat is pretty stinking close to the square root of p times 1 minus p over n, which in this case is the square root of 35% times 1 minus 35% over 1,500, which turns out to be that. Next, rule of thumb number two says I, it's okay to use the normal approximation as long as there's at least 10 successes and 10 failures. Well, if I have 1,500 college students and 35% of them are going to answer to the affirmative, is that more than 10? Yes, of course it is. How about n times 1 minus p? Is that Sorry, is that greater than 10? Yes, that's greater than 10. Also, both of those numbers are greater than 10. Here we have 525 is greater than 10. And, of course, the rest, 975 is greater than 10. So I can use the normal approximation. All right, so what, is the, what are these two rules of thumb telling us? Well, first of all, the second rule of thumb is telling us it's not really normal. But it's really, really close to normal since it meets the rule of thumb. And it doesn't just kind of meet the rule of thumb here. It really meets the rule of thumb. So it's really pretty close to normal. For all intents and purposes, we can call it normal, and we're going to go from there. Rule of thumb number one says that's not really the standard deviation. But as long as there's more than 10 times that many students, then that's really pretty close to the standard deviation. So that's what I can go ahead and use. So now I can draw my curve. My curve is normal based on rule of thumb number two. The center of it is 35%. What I'm actually interested in is the area in here, because that'll tell me the likelihood that I'm within two percentage points. And I know this distance right here is 0 0.0123. So now this takes us all the way back to chapter two, where I simply need to write the, the problem. So 
standardize it where my p hat becomes a z. Take each number, subtract the mean, divide it by the standard deviation. 37 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. When I standardize those numbers, or when I, sorry, when I simplify those numbers, it's negative 1.63 is less than Z is less than 1.63. And now I can either look these numbers up on my pink chart, or I could use uh, the, the function on the calculator. If you use the pink chart, it's going to be 94.84 minus uh, 0.0516, which is 0.89. 6, 8. If you use the normal CDF function on your calculator, you'll get something really close to that. And that tells us there is an almost 90% chance that if you ask 1,500 college students if they applied to another university, you're going to get within two percentage points of the real value. There's an almost 90% chance that if you ask 1,500 college students if they've applied to another university, and the true answer is 35%, your P hat is going to be really close to 35% within two percentage points. But if I look at that, it's the glass is half empty, there's a little better than 10% chance that you will end up out here being wrong, but of course you don't know you're wrong because you didn't know what the true value was.